The uh, program is entitled Social, Economic, uh, and Political Issues Related to Treaty Rights. And Jim invited me to be on the program because it was my privilege to work with Tom Lawson and many others in a lawsuit that uh, we brought in 1991, sort of phase three of the Treaty Rights uh, struggle. Phase one being the establishment of the right to go off reservation under the 1837 and 1842 treaties and harvest natural resources from the Cedar Territory. By the Voight decision in 1983, the decision of the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. And the second phase being the litigation that lasted from that decision until 1991 that determined the scope of that treaty right. And the case that I was fortunate to be involved with was a civil rights case, not a treaty rights case, but a case brought under federal civil rights laws to protect the exercise of those rights. And I don't have to go into much detail to describe why it was necessary to bring the case. I heard Tom's testimony and descriptions, which was powerful and compelling, and he's right, he could go on and on uh, about it, so I don't have to go into any detail about that. But uh, I will tell a little bit of the story about this case uh, so that you will understand how it fit in. The scope of the right uh, was in the process of being formulated. Tribal members had endured a, a lot of abuse and violence at the landings, and Tom and some other leading spearfishers at Black Duke Flambeau were trying to find some means of getting protection for spearfishers at the landings because you had a, pretty much an abdication of responsibility by the political leadership of the state of Wisconsin. The elected leaders were not sending the appropriate signals to the people of Northern Wisconsin who didn't like spearfishing. And you know, it's okay, they don't have to like it, but the federal courts had spoken that these were rights that tribal members had, and it was the responsibility of our elected officials to leave no doubt that those rights would be upheld and that interference with those rights would be punished. And, and that didn't happen. On the contrary, we had political leaders like representatives in Congress who were coddling these people, these so-called protesters at boat landings, meeting with them, giving them credibility that they did not deserve, introducing bills in Congress. This happened. Jim Sensen, brother, is still in Congress. He introduced a bill at the time that would have abrogated the treaty rights. You had political representatives of both political parties talking about cutting off federal assistance to tribes if they went off reservation to do this. And in 1989, you had the governor of the state of Wisconsin going into federal court and asking federal district judge Barbara Crabb to address the problem of violence and danger at the boat landings, not by taking forceful action against the people seeking to interfere with the right, but by shutting down the tribal fishery. He actually went into court with a straight face and said, Your Honor, we have a crisis situation here. Somebody's going to get killed. Here's what we think you ought to do prohibit the tribal members from going off and exercising their rights. 